Hey y'all, so welcome to another day in the life of an instructional designer. Um, I'm gonna be taking you through my day today. I have a bunch of meetings. Um, I'm gonna be doing some writing and kind of just giving you a little bit of background on my journey into instructional design. So it's about 8.20 and I've already had a meeting because I'm working with a product manager that is in Europe time. And so I had an early morning meeting, but um, it was pretty successful. Sometimes product managers will reach out to me and they'll tell me that maybe there's a customer or customers that are having a bit of trouble with a certain feature in a product or they wanna get um, some training created for a new feature that's coming out. And so, you know, they'll kind of walk me through that feature and then I'll kind of figure out how to create trainings for it. So I did that this morning. Um, and so that means that my day will kind of has shifted a bit earlier, which is nice. And so I can finish a bit earlier today. Um, but yeah, I'm about to have my morning stand up. Every Tuesday we have a morning stand up with my team. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to take y'all with me. Let's do it. So I just finished my stand-up and um, we just chatted about what everyone was working on this week and I was actually able to share a few of my takeaways from this book club that we're doing. Um, I think I've talked about this book before but I've gotten a few people from my team to check out this book and do a book club with me. It's called Inclusive Design for a Digital World and each week we're reading one chapter. It's about 20 pages. It's really interesting. This week we kind of talked about um, building empathy for accessible design and just different ways that we as um, instructional designers can learn about different experiences for people who have um, different needs, whether it's, you know, colorblindness or needing to um, navigate a website using just a keyboard or um, auditory. Uh, impairments and so just making sure that we're kind of gaining that experience through different activities so that we can make sure that we're building um, with total accessibility in mind. So that's been pretty fun to talk about and learn about each week. So for the rest of today, um, I'm gonna be spending time updating my Asana board because we use Asana, it's a task management software. I have three different kind of bigger projects coming up and so I need to put in all of my dates. We use Asana to kind of manage all of our big projects. So that could be updating a course or creating a new course. And so I have both of those things kind of on the horizon for this quarter. So I need to plan out my timeline so that my manager knows and also anyone who is in charge of like the product either updates or features um, can know about those timelines too. So I'm gonna put those in Asana and then I have a new course that I'm working on. Um, for those product features that I had mentioned earlier. Then I'm gonna be taking some screenshots to add to um, one of my existing courses, just as a small update. So yeah, it's gonna be kind of a screenshots day and a writing day and a, a sauna slash um, organizing my life and timelines day. So yeah, let's do it. Okay, I can't really show y'all much from um, my Asana board, but I did get this um, icon made on uh, Fiverr or maybe Upwork for $5. It's like a little icon that I've been using for all of like my collaboration, <laughs> my collaboration tools. I recommend getting something like this. It's kind of fun. Okay, so I've been taking my screenshots and I've added some captions to them, I've added some alt text, which is the text that describes the graphic or the image that you see for people who um, might use screen readers or if there's a broken link or a broken image, um, people can still access the content of the image. So I've added those to my course. Um, it just needed a few updates. 
Um, and then now what I'm gonna be doing is continuing to work on a new draft of a course. Um, usually what I'll do is I start with an outline um, based on conversations I've had with the people who want the course made. So in this case, maybe it's a product manager. Um, so I'll create a rough outline and then I share that outline with them and my manager because um, you know you want multiple perspectives, both from the content perspective, but also from like the instructional design perspective. And then I'll get feedback on the draft. Um, and then once I get feedback and incorporate that feedback, then I kind of start to um, expand on the content more and fill in that outline. So um, that'll probably happen within the next few days as soon as I get like my edits back. And we write in Google Docs, so I can kind of live have live conversations and live um, back and forth with people in the comment section of my Google Docs so that, you know, we're we're working in real time together, which is quite nice. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing for the rest of the day today. So it is later in the day. Um, I took a midday gym break and now I'm back. Um, I spent some more time writing my draft for the course that I'm working on. And in about 20 minutes um, at three, I have a, another meeting with another product manager. I'm gonna be doing a bit of consulting. Um, there's this feature that exists and this product manager that owns it wants to kind of talk about if it requires either like an extensive training or maybe like a one-off little training um, and kind of what that would look like. And so that'll be more of like a consultation-y type of conversation that we're gonna be having. And then whatever comes of that, um, I'll bring it to my manager and see like kind of where that would fall in our timelines. Probably not this quarter, but it'd be something in the works for the next quarter. And once I've finished that, I'll wrap up writing for the day and So I got a question recently on one of my videos about my transition from teaching into tech. Um, and so I just kind of wanted to give you a bit of background about that. So I spent the first part of my career as a K-12 teacher, but you know, after a few years, I decided I wanted to try something new. So I wasn't sure what exactly I wanted to do, but I knew that I wanted to work in tech. And so at first I spent some time teaching myself web development, learning how to code, how to build websites, and I started blogging about it. So that was kind of the first thing I did as I was deciding that I wanted to transition out of teaching. The second thing I did was once I decided that I really for sure wanted to leave teaching was I started applying for part-time contract roles at ed tech companies, which are education tech companies like your Notability, your Edmodos, your News ELAs, your Blackboards, your Springboards, all of those. And you know, a lot of them were looking for part-time content creator, curriculum developers, which meant that I was either creating assignments or assessments or, you know, just quiz questions or editing things that teachers could use in their classrooms. And so I did that on a part-time basis. So it was maybe like 10 to 20 hours per week. The roles that I took, it was a per question or per assessment basis. And so I wasn't exactly tied down to like a certain quantity. I just had to reach this low threshold, this lower threshold of content that I had to produce. So I spent about a year doing this, you know, contract work, working part-time while working full-time as a teacher. And then I decided that, you know, I had this blog of all these tutorials for web development. And I also had this experience where I was working in ed tech and learning, you know, how to collaborate virtually and the different project management tools and software that 
came with working at an ed tech company. I had all that experience and I decided to, you know, start applying for tech roles on LinkedIn. I primarily applied to curriculum developer roles and like content writing roles. I didn't know about the term instructional designer or learning experience designer, but after, you know, a bunch of searching on LinkedIn, I found that they're pretty much used interchangeably, curriculum developer, instructional designer, and learning experience designer, where it's, you know, you're creating these materials, whether it's for your internal company or externally customer facing, to where you're creating trainings for a tech company. You can either be building videos, you can be writing text, you can be creating simulations. And so all of that were just skills that, you know, I was making sure that I was at least becoming familiar with um, as I was applying. One of the biggest tips that I can give is as you're applying, look on the job description and kind of learn, you know, what skills you might need to become an instructional designer. For me, I think a big one was, you know, writing tutorials. And I think that my experience blogging on the side really gave me a nice portfolio that I could submit when I was applying for those roles. So yeah, it's been almost five years and I love every second of being an instructional designer. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a little bit about how I made my way from teaching to tech. Alrighty y'all, that's it for today. Um, thank you for joining me for a day in the life of an instructional designer. I'll see you next time.